Hey, Pastor Bill here with another question. This, t this question was submitted by Tim. He says, Sola Scriptura is the fund a fundamental tenet of, the, of Protestant Christianity and the Reformation, and it's faced much criticism for or our Orthodox counterparts, many of whom point to it as a doctrine that has splintered Christianity into many denominations. And so wondering, where did this come from, this idea of Sola Scriptura, or Scripture alone as our authority? Where did it develop is the basics of, I think, what Tim was getting at. And so so a little church history today as we think about the doctrine of authority and divine authority and God's revelation. And so in the first few centuries of the church, we, there, there was a belief in the authority of the scripture that the church had. Now, when we look at scripture that is typically talked about in the New Testament, it is referring to what we call the Old Testament, the Hebrew Bible. And the Hebrew Bible was authoritative in the revelation of God's will to the early church, along with the apostolic witness. And there was apostolic authority for the 12 apostles um, appointed, 11 and then plus Matthias, and then the Apostle Paul, who was appointed by Jesus. And so they exercised authority within the churches. But over the first few centuries of the church, their writings, apostolic writings, were collected into our New Testament. And the canon was closed, not as an establishment of what was in and what was out, as if there was much debate, but really saying, all of the once all the apostles had died, now we're going to say that was the limitation of the authoritative revelation of God's word. So once that canon was established, it was looked at as the authority for the church. Now, and then the church had a responsibility to be the interpreters, and that's where there were church councils to deal with things like the doctrine of the Trinity and the doctrine of which, what scripture would be. And, and so those councils helped us to interpret scripture. Now, it wasn't until, really until the 12th century, that a, that a tradition came to its fullness of having two sources of authority that were held equally together. It was in the 12th century that William of Ockham was really the first to uphold that the tradition of the church was co-equal with scripture and in its authoritative revelation and, and ruling of the church. And so a little bit of context, that was, it had been centuries of debate on how the church spoke in and what authority the church had with the great schism that came between East and West. There was the question of authority of bishops and the Bishop of Rome versus other bishops. So there was all kinds of turmoil throughout the centuries of the church's development. And, and getting the timeline straight is important because now in the 12th century, we're only a few hundred years away from the reformers and Luther and Calvin who came and said, let's return to the first tradition. Let's go back to the authority of scripture because they had seen the abuse of church authority within the Roman Catholic Church to contradict what they saw in scripture directly. And so this came to a head with things like the sale of indulgences to spring somebody from purgatory um, and Luther's disdain was that was obviously what sprung the 95 Theses and was the spark that lit the Reformation. But that was one issue that the reformers had in saying, we are going to look to scripture alone as the ultimate authority. And so that was was the cry of sola scriptura in the Reformation. Now, to getting to some of the heart behind what I think is in Tim's question, I do think we can see how that's been abused, though, where people have moved beyond the idea of Scripture as the final authority with church tradition and councils and history having an appropriate place in interpreting Scripture, and we've moved to, in the American context especially, a radical individualism that really we can trace back to the 18th century and some of the awakenings and revivals that swept through the United States and as and, and frontier religion that spread, that people started to have an idea of basically saying, it's me and my Bible and you can't tell me otherwise. And saying, this is all I need. And if I have my Bible, I don't, I don't need anything else and we don't want anything else. And even rejecting reading other sources and incorporating church history and the theology and having a cynicism toward academy and seminaries and a cynicism toward systematic theology and and a um, it, it, and this is this is the American this is American religion at its core now that is not the same thing that the reformers said the reformers were reading Augustine and saying let's get back to Augustine and the church fathers the reformers were, were clinging to scripture as the final arbiter as the final authority
but not as the sole authority. Instead, the reformers said, no, the church has an important role to play. The church is who helps us to interpret these things as a body. The church does have authority in the administration of the sacraments, in the practice of church discipline, and in the right proclamation of God's word. But as we come to debates, we don't hold church tradition at an equal level with scripture. It is only scripture that serves as the final authority, the divinely revealed word of God. And so that's what the heart behind the reformers' cry of sola scriptura is. And we have seen the splintering effects, particularly as American individualism has taken over in that and said, well, it's the Bible alone. And that isn't healthy either. Um, if, if you are coming from, for those of you listening that are coming from um, traditions and backgrounds where that's been infused into you and you're skeptical of outside sources saying we don't need to go beyond the Bible, I would, I would challenge and encourage you to consider that the voices of the past are wise, studied Christians. And the same way that we interact with Christians in our churches as we struggle to interpret God's word and incorporate their voices but don't hold them as authoritative over God's word, we can also turn to the voices of the great <laughs> saints of the past, whether it's Augustine or Aquinas or Calvin or Luther or, or even then those who are writing today. We are, what we're doing is incorporating the voices of God's people as we learn how to interpret God's word. And for those who are part of traditions, when in our Orthodox counterparts, as Tim puts it, whether in Roman Catholic Church or Eastern Orthodox, there is a difficulty that has to be dealt with theologically of, of saying that, that you believe that the church bishops and leaders can stand above God's word and are equal with it. Um, when, when the church contradicts God's word, we, we do turn to God's word as the final arbiter and official revelation from his word. Believing, as it says, as Paul said in, to, his, to young Timothy, that all of scripture is God-breathed and useful in correcting and rebuke and exhorting and encouraging, and also recognizing that even the apostles saw each other's writings as scripture as we read Peter talk about Paul's words that way. So there's some thoughts on Sola Scriptura. Tim, thanks for asking the question. If you have a question to send in, go ahead and please send it in and I would love to, to do my best to answer it.